So let's take some uh, specific rare diseases uh, in our area. The first one that I want to talk about is uh, body fat disorders called lipodystrophies. Uh, these disorders can be inherited or acquired. And both the forms are characterized by selective but variable loss of body fat from different regions. Uh, inherited lipodystrophies are very rare, autosomal recessive or dominant disorders with a prevalence that we have estimated to be less than one in a million. A common feature of these disorders is marked hypertriglyceridemia, early onset of diabetes, hepatic steatosis, and which highlights the role of adipose tissue in lipid homeostasis and glucose homeostasis. So patients with lipodystrophies are predisposed to insulin resistance. Because they don't have much fat, they have deficiency of a hormone which is produced by body fat called leptin, which regulates appetite and energy expenditure. And leptin re replacement therapy has been shown to be a promising option for patients with generalized lipodystrophies. The other disease that we can talk about are disorders, genetic disorders of cholesterol and lipid metabolism, familial hypercholesterolemias, and familial chylomicronemia syndromes. And familial hypercholesterolemias are characterized by extremely high levels of cholesterol, which in young patients can give rise to premature strokes, premature heart attacks, development of xanthomas on their body, and other manifestations. On the other hand, familial chylomicronemias, which are due to deficiency in the enzymes which break down fat in our body, result in, again, xanthomas, but also recurrent attacks of pancreatitis, which could be lethal. These are also extremely rare disorders, approximately one in a million patients develop the either homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia or familial chylomicronemia syndrome due to defects in various uh, disease genes such as low density lipoprotein receptor gene that encodes the LDL receptor protein or apolipo B protein. These disorders cause familial hypercholesterolemia. On the other hand, deficiencies in lipoprotein lipase or some other factors and proteins which uh, activate lipoprotein lipase can give rise to type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia or familial chylomicronemia syndrome. So uh, let's start with uh, lipodystrophies. So Elaine, you have a lot of experience at NIH for the last more than 20 years about dealing with these rare patients with lipodystrophies. Uh, what would you say are the characteristic presenting features of these patients with congenital or acquired lipodystrophies? So this is sort of a loaded question, and you know that too, because they could be an inherited or acquired form of lipodystrophy, but then after that, it could be generalized loss of fat or partial. And then those two distinct distinctions really make it difficult sometimes for the primary care provider to see that their patient may have something unusual. So I find, especially if you look at pediatric patients, if they have a generalized form of lipodystrophy, often the parents will say they look like a gymnast or they came, they were, ever since they've been born, they just look so muscular and they don't look unhealthy at all, but they look super fit for as if they were doing lifting weights every day. But as they get older, some of the symptoms really start, the health symptoms start to come on. They'll get an enlarged liver from the fat accumulation there, and that'll be very abnormal looking. And then the patients get the side effect of extreme insulin resistance. And most patients of most ethnicities will have some type of skin darkening in their axillary region, groin, and in their neck. And if the mother tried to wash it off, they can't <laughs> wash it off. And, and that's, usu that's usually a good symptom of it. And then the enormous appetite is another symptom in pediatrics that the parents may say. The diabetes symptoms don't seem to develop as early on because young children have an enormous capacity to make plenty of insulin to overcome this insulin resistance. But as they start to go through puberty, 
they will start to develop insulin resistance and diabetes. And I think that that's where I've sort of gone on an offshoot that one of my other specialties as a diabetes educator is in picking up symptoms over the phone of high dose insulin requirements because these are going to be teenagers that don't need the typical one unit per kilo per day or half unit per kilo per day we're used to in type 1 diabetes. Sure. These are teenagers that are requiring hundreds of units of insulin a day and more that becomes the provider's focus. How can I get this insulin in them? And they're not really asking, well, why do they need so yeah. much insulin? And that's another large symptom that will come forward. And that symptom of extreme diabetes also is a symptom you can see in the older patients as well. The hypertriglyceridemia, it seems like depending on, some, a lot of times it's depending on the degree of lipodystrophy, how extreme this can be, and also whatever other family inheritance they're bringing to the table. But this is when you'll see the xanthoma on their elbows and then maybe even frequent bouts of pancreatitis. But in general, a lot of these symptoms can really be picked up early on through blood work, but they're often not things in blood work that you'd be looking at in somebody that young. So, uh, <clears throat> so you, you mentioned a lot about the pediatric cases. Uh, let me add on about the features in adult patients with lipodystrophies that many of them will present what a, a general physician will think is a common type 2 diabetes or common form of dyslipidemia uh, or polycystic ovarian syndrome or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. But if you put all of these together, if a patient presents to you at the age of 30 with, with diabetes and you examine them carefully and they have hardly any fat on their arms and legs, and as Elaine mentioned, acanthosis nigricans, that pigmentation in the axillae or on the neck, then you start suspecting uh, either genetic or acquired forms of lipodystrophies.